Hey, this is Jeff at Trev Daily Motorcycles, and our bike of the week this week is a 2020 custom pre-owned Lowrider S. All right, so this is a pretty exciting moment. Um, I've only got to ride a Lowrider S once before because they're always selling, uh, so we don't get a chance to ride them. Uh, we haven't had any demo bikes of them. But last year, before all this COVID stuff uh, happened, I was down in Texas and I got to ride one on a racetrack. That was stock. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is a fully custom bike. Uh, let's go for a ride, talk a little bit about the customizations on the ride, and also um, just a little bit about the Lowrider S. So we'll get it fired up here. It's got the Two Brothers exhaust, so it should sound pretty good. Hopefully you'll still be able to hear me, but uh, let's get out on the road. This is just a, a super fun bike to ride. We'll take it out on the highway for a little bit too. But this bike right here, um, really low K. It's just got about 10,000 K on it. For some reason, uh, it's in miles. I don't know why the odometer got clicked over. 6,150 miles. I'll have to change that over. But uh, these bikes are really hard really hard to uh, keep in stock right now so we just got this one on the floor fully custom the other hard part that's been with these lowrider s's is getting the parts that everyone wants to do everyone wants to get their bike ready for bike season all of the different parts and uh, you just can't get the parts in they're taking two three months to get the parts in this bike is fully kitted out so you could come down right away with maybe a lot of the stuff that you would want to have already done to the bike. So it's got the uh, JT, JD Fab uh, front fairing done to it. It's a nice height. Uh, it's going to depend a little bit on how tall you are, but it is adjustable. Uh, but it's a nice height to, uh, to block the wind. And I'm just about to hit the highway, so I'll be able to get a feel on that. The uh, front headlights push forward on it and then it's got the Bun King crash bar on it and uh, some nice pegs, upgrades, a lot of nice touches on it. Saddleman seat, uh, stage one, it's got the uh, Two Brothers exhaust on it uh, which sounds really good. Two Brothers, awesome uh, if you're going to be doing a street bob, low rider S, fat bob. Any of those ones where you're looking for that added performance, uh, this is definitely uh, the pipe that you're going to want to get into. That or the Bassani. Both though, really, really hard to get on. Uh, so this bike's already got it. But also, this bike has got stage two. So it's had the stage two done to it. Um, and then all the nice little uh, added touches. It's got a layback plate on it. It's got some Viking hard bags on it. It's got these Rix adjustable levers. Now, depending on the size of your hands, I don't have super big hands. I got my cool new Odin gloves on though. Uh, I don't have super big hands. So, um, Harleys usually have a pretty long throw on it. Uh, I grew up riding sport bikes, so I like that short clutch feel. I like to adjust my clutch and get a really short clutch feel. Um, a good way to do that on a Harley is with adjustable levers. Ricks are premium levers. They're a company over in Germany, but they make, they're, they're great. Um, I adjusted them before the ride. Obviously the previous owner of this had much larger hands than I do, uh, but I adjusted this to get this set up and uh, the clutch throw and, and length on it feels awesome for me. I got the um, brake uh, shortened up a little bit too just to make it a little bit uh, easier to squeeze on. Um, it's got more little touches to the axle nut covers. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned before the lay down plate. Uh, these come stock with a LED brake light on them anyways so it has the stock LED brake light. But um, yeah, I mean, this is the popular bike. This is the hot bike right now. And that first time I mentioned before that I rode it in Texas on a racetrack, 
I was excited because that was the first time I got to get out on the bike and see what it's about. And one of the big differences, so the two performance cruisers in the um, Softail lineup is this Lowrider S and the Fat Bob, both boasting the dual discs. But the Lowrider S has one added uh, performance thing on it, and that is the 28 inch rake, giving it a little bit better handling into the corners. So it feels more nimble. I'm going to take a little easy on the tires here. It's got a brand new rear tire on it. Uh, which is nice, but uh, you got to get it to just let it scrub in a bit. So uh, it hasn't started raining yet. It's supposed to start raining here. Uh, we've had a beautiful weather. Everyone's been running down to grab their bikes. Um, but yeah, with this stage two, you can definitely feel the extra grunt. Um, it gets up to uh, up to highway speed quite quickly here. Just going to do a quick loop here. Still looks like there's a little, little bit of rush hour traffic, uh, not too bad. I have to be uh, responsible here as I am uh, out on a work uh, demo plate. So uh, we will uh, responsibly check out the performance of this bike. Uh, but it's super comfortable. This fairing is nice. It feels like it sits down really well. It's um, blocking off the wind. I can feel a bit out here. Uh, but it actually it, it takes a lot off and uh, That torque you can feel it uh, you can feel it get up and go the pipe is nice the two brothers pipe is nice You can probably hear it a bit It's loud, but it's not like crazy loud. It's not annoying loud I have Vance and Heinz big shots on my bike and uh, I find those are annoyingly loud And so I'm gonna have to move over here Still pretty good traffic going on because they're just doing a short short little loop this route here is the route that I will tell people to do on test rides because uh, you get out on the highway for just a, a short stint um, then we're gonna jump off the highway here in Burnaby right by Deer Lake there's a, a little bit of windy spot um, it's not super fast it's in the city but if you're just looking to see how a little bit of twisties, not nothing too crazy. It'd be, it'd be nice to be uh, ripping up the Squamish this morning and doing something like that, and really finding out what this bike feels like. But the thing that I love about the Lowrider S is, from the very beginning, the first time I got on it, cracked down that first, that straight stretch on the racetrack, it felt. I don't know, comfortable, it, it, it just, it felt like it, it fit good and it just, it was right away enjoyable. Um, so yeah, big thing is too, when you're looking at a bike, it's a good idea to always test ride a bike. You can say, wow, this is a super, super cool bike. Look at this bike, look how cool it is. And maybe it is super cool, but if you get out and ride it, it may suck for you. Or it may be the most awesome bikes. I've test rode bikes before. I knew nothing about, went into a shop, have a look at a bike, recommended a different bike, didn't like the look of the bike. Well, let's, you know, take it out for a test ride, see what it's like, and then ended up, you know, falling in love with it and then going out and buying that bike. So you don't really know about a bike until you go out and, and test ride it. Um, also on this bike, so another thing I didn't mention, it's got hard rise, hard rise caser, um, hard hard case risers I don't know why that was so hard to say hard case risers on it uh, nice height to these bars uh, especially if you're gonna be probably 510 to 62 uh, sort of range this will be a, a nice height it's uh, it's comfortable uh, it's it's nice and relaxed and it makes it makes the bike especially for a longer ride uh, a little bit more I enjoyable to ride but this is this is a pretty good height if you're a bit taller, you might want to go up a bit higher. Um, or if you're a bit shorter, you might want to stick with the stock ones. Uh, but this, I mean, this bike here is kitted out with really a, a, most of the things that our people are doing right now. And the people that are 
customizing their lowrider S with the two brothers and the saddleman seat and the fairing and all of that. Uh, they're waiting a long time for their bike. They're phoning the parts department. Have my parts come yet? So the cool thing about this bike, one is that you can see what it looks like, but number two is it's done. And the stage two is a nice upgrade. It just gives you a little more grunt on the bottom end. So it's got a torque cam. It's still super smooth. So it's not, it's not twitchy. You're not getting on the bike and the bikes become super twitchy and a, and a little bit a little bit sketchy to ride. You just got that nice bottom end on it. If you want to crack on it, you're going to get going. And it's it's so smooth. I mean, that's the big thing. When you get this 114 tuned, you know, with the tuner, even if you're just doing stage one, you don't necessarily need to do stage two, but even if you're just doing stage one and you get it tuned and you get it breathing right, it's just, it's such a smooth bike. And uh, with this setup, with this fairing here, because it does sit up taller, um, you can ride all day. And hey, double discs, the brakes work. I should pay more attention. Um, a little bit of construction here. So yeah, that was it. That was the big twisty. It's not uh, too much traffic still this morning to really kind of get in the zone and uh, forget about the traffic and, and just ride a bit. Um, but it's um this bike is great great in the corners that 28 inch rake makes a big difference for handling uh the first time i got out rode the stock bike on the um on the racetrack fell in love instantly that yeah the hype is all real taking this bike out now and, and riding it it's the same feeling it's even better uh, the Saddleman seat is nice. It's a nice position. Um, this one's, you know, quite comfy. And uh, they have mids, but it's got the bunking here, uh, crash bar on it, so you can put your feet up. I don't know if you can see that like that. Stretch out your feet if you want to, you know, stretch out your legs a bit. Get the feeling of forward controls. Uh, but still have those mid controls for for the control and and just for the performance. Um, it can come down to a little bit of your preference. If you if you ride forwards all the time, you might say, "Well, this is a bit cramped." Um, there are some different seat options too. You can you can convert this to forward controls if you wanted to. Uh, but the big thing that people are doing is this uh, crash bar where it does have on the end of it um, some pegs and you can use that as like a highway peg you can stretch your leg out if you're just cruising out on the highway and and you want to kind of stretch your leg out the other one on this too is saddleman seats uh, Harley has seats um, that will change your rider position the low reach seat and the uh, tall boy seat tall boy seat will push you back if you are uh, you know if you're around six feet and you put on a tall boy seat those mids may just be uh, comfortable enough but it depends it's just gonna depend on how long your your legs are your inseam um, because you know if you got really long legs it might feel cramped but uh, for me this is a, is a nice it's uh, it feels really comfortable the saddleman seat too they have the three different positions so you can have a seat that pushes you forward and you can have a seat that's uh sort of i don't know in the middle a normal seat and then uh, they do have a seat uh, would be considered a tall boy seat a seat that brings you back and um, if you're a little bit taller sometimes that seat is what's going to make it comfortable and it is nice to have those mids with this you can still stand up on your pegs you're not going to MX or, or moto style this bike, but it is uh, it is nice to have that kind of control um, Still be able to squeeze your knees on the tank and get that kind of uh, Dirt bike feel to the bike But uh, you're not going to be dirt biking this bike. It's a it's a bit heavy for that um, But if you're coming off a dirt bike recently, I sold a bike um, 
to a customer who is uh, a motocross racer. So uh, for him, getting on this bike um, and getting set up and, and similar kind of bar, bar height and all of those things, but um, it was very natural progression for him to come from motocross and, and it was actually his first street bike, uh, but he had such experience and, and raced motocross. Um, so to go to this as a first bike uh, was fine because of, of how good of a rider he is, uh, but it was a nice natural progression to go from motocrossing, dirt biking, if you're a pretty accomplished you know, motocrosser, dirt biker, um, the Lowrider S or, or one of the big twin engines is, uh, can be alright for a first bike. Um, as you're going to, uh, it's just not going to have that same feel though as a dirt bike. So if you spend a lot of time on dirt bikes, um, you're going to have some nice skills that will help you but not all the skills translate from the dirt to the road and uh, you, you can't really push around or kick around your your lowrider s like you can a dirt bike so but uh, I think it's a nice progression and 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 when you have those off-road motocross dirt bike skills um, this is a nice bike to get into um, that has a, a similar feeling but you're going to be on the road you're going to learn all the new skills on the road and and always if you're a new rider go out take a course get out on the road but take a course before you start because it's a good way to learn um, all of the not just the skills so there's all the skills that you need to be on the road but also there are things, you know, position, where you should be on the road, and, and all of the things that they're going to ask you on the test, which, you know, your friend can teach you some of the skills, and, and if your friend's a good rider, um, they might be able to give you some tips. They might give you some bad tips, too. Uh, but those tips to, uh, to do the road test and to pass the road test, you want to go through a, a qualified school because they're gonna they're gonna get you to pass the test uh, your friends just gonna give you crappy advice probably I, I mean I wouldn't want to give someone advice uh, I got my motorcycle license in the early 90s so uh, there and at that time there wasn't even a road test so you don't want my advice getting ready for your road test um, you want to go to uh, to a school uh, we partner with Pro Ride over in North Vancouver and, and they're awesome. Just make sure whatever you do, um, get to a certified uh, school uh, here in BC, certified for ICBC. If you're in different parts of Canada, the States, it's going to be uh, whatever your licensing goes through. And I'm sure there's motorcycle schools that are certified to help specifically get you the knowledge and the abilities to one, pass your test. Um, but really, I, I've seen riders come out of those schools um, and, and been quite amazed. New riders come out, ride big bikes, and say, so, wow, holy cow. You know, really, um, you can see what they've learned. And then, you know, I've been around people who are seen customers come in who, who got their learners and kind of did it themselves, and, and you go out with a ride for them. And you're like, whoa, okay, I'm glad we made it back. So the best thing you can do is uh, go do a riding course uh, because it's, uh, they're just so invaluable. I did uh, just last year actually an adventure riding course getting ready for the Pan America and just all the things you forget. Um, I spent a lot of time in the dirt, but uh, things I've forgotten. And then also too, is that uh, I rode dirt bikes. I didn't ride adventure bikes. So there's a new skill set that, uh, you know, yeah, there's adventure courses. So with that Pan America coming up, there are adventure courses. I highly recommend go take one if you're going to get into adventure biking. Because a lot of times what happens is that people will do, uh, go out, get an adventure bike, get excited. I want to ride off-road. If you get off-road and you don't actually have the skill set or, or know the things that you should be doing um, you know and maybe it's that guy thing well uh, you know I'll figure it out but 
you'd save yourself so much time and grief and and, and you're probably not going to end up trading it in because we get a lot of trade-ins on adventure bikes uh, for people who probably thought it was a great idea I'm going to get out I'm going to have an adventure I'm going to off-road and the minute you go off-road it's like I don't want to dump my bike I don't want to I don't want to crash my bike and so the adventure ends uh, just because they didn't they didn't get, learn the skill set so take a course take a course if you're gonna ride on the road take a course if you're gonna ride off-road and if you've been riding for years take a course again refresh yourself one of the courses that I would love to do um, right now really hard because uh, it's uh, it's down in the States and of course everything's closed I can't go down to the States but down in Portland they have the police training uh, motorcycle bike police training well here's someone doing some creative driving as per usual here in Vancouver um, the in uh, in Portland they have this police course so they, it's for regular people for civilians you can go down and do that same police training to learn to ride you know the road kings the bigger bikes and uh, I, I really want to take that course because that's you know that's when you're, you're, you know, you're learning to ride hard and, and part of that course is dumping the bike, dump, 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 until you actually get those low speed skills on a, on a, on a big bike. So, I, uh, it's kind of one of the things I want to, I want to get done in the next couple years, uh, just to kind of up, up my skills riding. I ride a Dyna, so, um, but we do take out from the shop uh, the big bikes and uh, I've had fun on it. Uh, it's been an interesting experience because up until I started working with Harley Davidson and selling Harley Davidsons, I had never um, ever tried to uh, to ride a big bike before or owned a big bike. So the first the first little bit was intimidating. The first couple hundred kilometers uh, was a bit intimidating. Then I got used to it, uh, but I know I could get better. I know there's skills that I'm missing because I don't I don't ride those on a, on a regular basis, um, but on a regular basis I ride a Dyna, and, and this this low rider S is in, in line with that. Uh, it gives the feeling uh, same similar feeling, so that's probably uh, why I like it. I got bars about the same height, uh, seating position is the same, and uh, but the big difference is this bike's got power. My, Mine's an 06 twin cam 88. Um, I gotta do a little work on the engine, but so if I went back and rode my bike and say, "Is there broken? Is something wrong with it?" It doesn't have the power. It's not as fun to ride. Um, but yeah, it's uh, if you're riding a bit of an older Dyna and you love that, but you want something more modern, want more power. Maybe you don't want to spend, you know, thousands, thousands, thousands of dollars on the engine upgrading it to still get a bike that is not gonna handle as well. I mean, this really is the handling Harley. If you wanna get into, you know, the Harley that handles the best, the best performing Harley, this is it. This is the Lowrider S. Uh, I would jump all over it. And this right here, well, it's done. Everything's done on it. You can have it right away. You're not sitting waiting three months for parts. So give us a call. At Trev Daily Motorcycles, I'm about to get back to the dealership. So, I hope you enjoyed the ride. This bike is available now. Come down, check it out. Did you watch the whole video? Uh, kudos to you if you actually watched the whole video. But yeah, this bike's available now. Come down to beautiful Vancouver and check it out here at Trev Daily Motorcycles.